Wow, the beta of DaVinci Resolve is now on the iPad. I've been using it for a few weeks. My initial impression, it is amazing. Now, is this the full version of Resolve or is it limited? Is it good enough to do professional work with? How well does it run and what accessories do you need? If you're interested in the answers to those questions, then please keep on watching. I'm using the latest 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the M2 chip. This will also run happily on any M1 iPad, including the iPad Air. We're gonna test that soon though and show you the results. By default, Resolve launches into the last project that you open. The first thing that you will notice is that it looks exactly like the desktop version of Resolve. You can use your finger or a pencil to navigate. It's very intuitive. If you're already used to using Resolve, then there's next to no learning curve. The only part of the desktop interface that is missing is the menu bar, usually visible at the top. Now currently, Resolve on iPad only has the cut and color page. Don't worry, we'll get to that later. But first, I'd like to show you the project manager. Now I love how familiar this is. Now, this will start to give you a sense of how fully featured the iPad app is. We've got these same three tabs for connecting to local, network, or cloud databases. I'm gonna go back to my local database. Yep, you'll see it's even possible to create additional local libraries, but I'm just gonna work in the existing one and I'm gonna create a new project. Let's name it. There's no media page yet. I'm sure it's coming. So currently to import media, we'll use the media pool in the cut page. Click on this button and basically Resolve is gonna bring up the iPad files interface. Resolve can access any media that you can see in files. So that includes attached SSDs, cloud services like Dropbox and iCloud, or even network drives. The media that I'm using, I've got about 300 gigabytes of it, is located on my iPad. I'll select all of the clips in this folder using the Select All button and import them. Resolve handles media exactly the same way as it does on the desktop version of Resolve. It just links to the media wherever it's stored. The media that I'm using is 6K ProRes 422 at 24 frames per second. I can drag clips into the timeline or I can load them in my source viewer and create in and out points and then bring them down into the timeline. Wanna see something really cool? If you have a speed editor, yep, you can use that too. Mine is connected via Bluetooth. And of course, once clips are in your timeline, you edit them the exact same way you would on a desktop version of Resolve, either using the pen, your finger, or alternatively, of course, you can trim them down with the speed editor. I just want to emphasize though, the speed editor is an optional extra. You do not need this in order to be able to edit comfortably on the iPad. You might get sick of hearing me say the phrase, it's the same as the desktop version. I've only been using Resolve on iPad for about two weeks now, but I'm still blown away by the fact that it looks and functions exactly like the desktop version of Resolve. That's no mean feat, and the interface is surprisingly intuitive on a touch interface. Now, just the same as the desktop version, timeline settings are configured in project settings. There's less options here. Obviously, there are things that you can't do on the iPad version yet, like plug in and Ultra Studio. But again, who knows? Maybe the dev team will add features like this in the future. To test this thing out, let's set the resolution to UHD. You can see that playback is still fine. There's no stuttering or issues. Heading back into project settings, one of the things that I'm most impressed to see on the iPad is full color management. Look at this. I can even use ACES workflows if I wanted to. I'm going to use DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. I'm gonna change it to custom and set my timeline color space to DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate. I've got used to the way that the tools work in that color space. All that beautiful 6K ProRes 422 footage that I'm working with has been shot on a Kinefinity Marvo LF. The best input color space to use for the Marvo LF is the Ari Log C3 color profile. Even on the desktop version of Resolve, you can't set the input color space in the cut page, but I can do it in the color page. I've not yet worked out how to set the input color space for multiple clips simultaneously. So I'm having to go through and do them one by one. It is a bit tedious, but I'm sure that's just me being stupid. I need to work out how to do it properly. As you can see, Resolve can handle playback of the footage with color management turned on with no problems. There's no stuttering. This is all at real time. 
Let's see if we can stress it out though by piling several clips on top of each other. I'm going to use the inspector to turn down the opacity of these clips so that Resolve has to work extra hard to composite them together. Playback is still pretty good. It is stuttering slightly, but remember two things. Firstly, this is 6K ProRes 422 footage, so that's a lot of data that Resolve is chomping through. Secondly, this is still beta software. I've no doubt that the dev team is going to further optimize and fix bugs on this before it gets released to the public. All right, let's delete those clips. One other quick thing, is it possible to work with anamorphic footage? Of course. This clip has been shot with a two times squeeze anamorphic lens. Simply find it in your media pool, long press on the clip, go to clip attributes, much the same way you would do on the desktop version of Resolve, and in there you can change the pixel aspect ratio of your footage. Now it's time to try some color grading. Every single tool that's available on the desktop version of Resolve is present here, even the effects. Let's grade a clip. I don't really have anything specific in mind to do here. I'm just playing around with the tools. I want to show you that grading on the iPad is exactly like grading on a desktop computer. I have the same tools, they work the same way. It's a really cool experience using your fingers to grade. All of the primary tools feel very intuitive to use on a touch screen. It's almost like I'm using a fancy dedicated control surface. Also as well, so I don't get my head in front of the camera, I am using the iPad from a slightly awkward angle, so my hand-eye coordination is a little bit off. So please forgive me if I miss sometimes with my pen when trying to hit small buttons. Deleting and redrawing links works exactly as you'd expect. Right-click contextual menus are accessed with a long press, either with the pencil or with your finger. But what about more resource-intensive effects? For example, noise reduction. I'm going to turn on some temporal noise reduction. I'll set the number of frames to 3 and motion estimation to better. And then I'll turn the noise reduction on by increasing the threshold. Also, if you don't mind, I'd like to quickly pop a serial node in here and make a few adjustments to the image. I need to fix the color temperature. It's way too warm. And bring up the gamma a little bit, just so those stars in the Milky Way really sparkles. Let's see what playback performance is like. It's not able to play back in real time, but that doesn't surprise me because even on my desktop computer, noise reduction won't play back in real time. I'd say this is actually very usable, and again, who knows what optimizations are going to come in the future. Even with less frames, it still runs slowly. But it doesn't matter. This is a perfect use case scenario for caching the output of this noise reduction node. Yep, you can also do that in Resolve on iPad. But first, we need to turn on the render cache. Now, I was a little lost at first because on the desktop version, this is accessed in the menus at the top of the screen. On iPad, it has been moved into project settings. Here it is. I'll just set it to user. What about magic mask? That's usually a resource intensive effect. I'll use the eyedropper to identify the person that I want to track. And then let's hit the track forwards and backwards button. This is actually pretty fast. I've put quite a long clip in the timeline. You might be able to tell that from the number of frames on the progress bar. Also, I've just noticed, I'm so sorry, I did object tracking rather than people tracking. Either way, I'm not going to make you watch this bar scan across, but it gives you an idea of how usable Magic Mask is on the iPad. One more resource intensive effect to look at, depth map. Oh, I left mask overlay on in Magic Mask. There you go, that's better. Now I can see just the depth map. I have got to say, that is very, very responsive. Let's make some adjustments to the map to make the background a little bit cleaner. A new feature added in 18.1 was the ability to use the alpha output of an open FX directly on the node that the effect is applied to. It looks like that option is already enabled by default. So now I can use my primary wheels to make an adjustment to the image. Let's invert the map because I want to color grade the background, not our talent. 
Also, let's add a little bit of blur to that depth map. As you can see, depth map is incredibly easy to use on iPad. Instead of making the background darker, let's just desaturate it and give it a blue tint. That looks nicer. Finally, let's demonstrate a little bit of creative grading. I'm going to apply a bleach bypass look to this clip. I like to build my bleach bypass look using a layer mixer with the composite mode set to overlay. I'm going to set my nodes up to feed a color image into the layer mixer's first input and a black and white image into the layer mixer's second input. Now, to make this black and white node, I could just reduce the saturation. Instead, a better way of making a black and white image is to use your RGB mixer. It's found in the same menu that we found the motion effects panel earlier. With this panel, I can control how much red, green, or blue is being used to create the monochrome image. As mentioned, let's switch the composite mode of this layer mixer to overlay. And there you go, instant bleach bypass. By default, this effect comes out looking pretty strong. So I'll use a custom curve to reduce the contrast in the black and white node to make this look a little bit more subtle. I can also reduce the levels of saturation in the color node to further desaturate the image. It's looking pretty good, but if we want to make an authentic bleach bypass look, we need to add some film emulation. I'm going to add a glow effect to soften the image. I am going to get better at clicking and dragging. Next, I'm going to add some halation. You know, those really nice red glows that you get in highlights when stuff is shot on film. So I'll add a new serial node and I'll go find the halation open effects and drag it down. I'm OK with the default settings for now. And finally, I'm going to add some film grain. I'm going to turn the strength and the opacity up here. It looks pretty gaudy, but just so you can clearly see that these effects are being applied to the clip. Even with all those effects and color grades applied, this clip still plays back perfectly in real time. Now, grading on a screen this small can be challenging. To help with that, you can connect an external monitor via the iPad's USB-C port. I'll demonstrate that another time, but for the time being, Resolve will allow you to choose whether the external display mirrors your iPad's display, or it can also send a clean video feed to it. Now, I want to emphasize, I've only had Resolve on iPad for two weeks. I'm still learning all of its nuances. Just the other day, I clicked the full screen button in the top right hand corner, and I couldn't work out how to get back. I imagine if I'd had a keyboard connected, I'd have been able to use the Command F hotkey. I'm sure there's a way of exiting full screen. It's probably just me being stupid. But for right now, I'm a little bit scared of that button. As we mentioned before, this isn't Resolve Lite. It's not a feature limited version of Resolve. It has pretty much, I don't want to say 100%, but let's say 95% of the features that you would find on the desktop version of Resolve. There are some things that I've not been able to find in the color page. For example, I've not been able to work out how to enable remote grades. I've not yet worked out how to install LUTs either. In project settings, you'll find under color management, there is the update LUTs list button. But when I go to the LUT browser and I try and long click on a clip, I can't reveal where they are stored in files. I'm sure there is a way of accessing that folder and installing your own LUTs. I've just not discovered it yet. And remember, while Resolve only has the cut and the color page at the moment, I've no doubt that the dev team is hard at work bringing the other pages to the iPad. As mentioned, there's no deliver page at the moment. All we've got is quick export. It allows you to export directly to social media platforms like YouTube. I'm going to render my video in H.264 and I'm going to save it locally on my iPad. Here's a fun question. Can I really open any project that I've created on the desktop version of Resolve? Yep. So here's a project stored in Blackmagic Cloud. I created it on the desktop version of Resolve. It's just got a couple of clips in just so I can demonstrate some cool things to you. First thing, what if I have a fusion composition in my timeline? Now you can't edit fusion compositions in Resolve on iPad at the moment, but you can play them. Let's see this clip here. It's got the little fusion logo in the bottom left hand corner. I've keyed this clip in the fusion page, but look, I can watch playback on my iPad. Incredibly, do you see how smooth the playback is? It's not dropping any frames at all. Now, if I did have a fusion composition that was too much for my iPad to play, don't forget there's the ability to cache fusion output. Yep, I can do that on my iPad. 
need to go to the color page for this, but if I long press on the clip, you can see here that I can turn on output caching for Fusion. Now, what if I open a project on my iPad and the media isn't stored in the same location? If I relink it, will it mess up that project for use on my desktop computer? No, that's what path mapping is for. It allows me to relink files on my iPad without messing up the project on the original computer. But finally, what if I have an unsupported codec in my project? For example, here is a red code file. It's not a problem. I rendered proxies on my desktop computer. So I'm going to relink the proxies on my iPad. And now I can edit like normal with those files. Of course, if I want to export using the original red code media, I am going to have to do that back on my desktop computer. Let's answer those questions. Is this the full version of Resolve or is it limited? While it only has the cut and color page, unequivocally, this is the full version of Resolve, bar maybe like a few minor features. As you saw, it even has the complete Fusion render engine inside, even though it doesn't have the Fusion page yet. Well, I'm sure the dev team is busy working on bringing us the rest of the pages as quickly as they can. Is it good enough to do professional work? Yes, again, within the limitations of the cut and color page, you can do everything that you can do on the desktop version. I guess a better question is, would you want to use this for professional work? Well, for me, the answer is yes, I'm already using it in my work. I wouldn't necessarily want to do all my work on it though, but I don't have to choose. I can switch between desktop and iPad. A Blackmagic Cloud makes that easy. You could use it for an entire project, or you could just do parts of a project on it. How well does it run? Well, you saw, right? It's ridiculous. And it's only in beta. Now, I have experienced some crashes. I've never lost any work thanks to Resolve's live save feature. We're going to test some more complex workflows to see how it holds up. And I've no doubt that further optimization will happen before release. What accessories do you need? None. My pencil helps. I love the speed editor, but it's not necessary. My favorite editing interface is still a keyboard. And you can plug those in. You could use Apple's official keyboards or something Bluetooth maybe. You can even use a USB keyboard if you really want. You can also plug in external monitors. And we're going to test accessories in future videos. When can I get it? I'm not sure. It's only in private beta at the moment, but when it does come out, there will be two versions, a free version and a studio version. Studio will cost $95, but we'll keep you updated as we learn more. Some concluding thoughts. I'm very impressed. This sounds stupid, but it works. And I cannot imagine the challenges of porting a program this complex to a completely different OS with a completely different form factor. In fact, it doesn't just work. It works well, really well. It's not Resolve Lite. It is full fat Resolve. It has full compatibility with the desktop app. And this is just the beta. This is going to be amazing. Thank you so much for joining us for this quick initial impressions video about Resolve on iPad. We are going to make some more content. Like I said, we want to test those workflows. We want to put this thing through its paces to see how good it is. If you'd like to see that content, please like this video so we know you're enjoying it and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. There are more coming soon. Thanks very much. Hey there, for tons more free editing training, head over to our website at filmeditingpro.com slash free training. Here you can download free editing guides along with high quality video training courses created by our team of professional Hollywood editors. Our tutorials cover a wide range of editing topics like cutting awesome movie trailers, editing action scenes, how to work with music and sound design, and a lot more. All of these free guides and videos are available at filmeditingpro.com slash free training. I'll see you next time.